in the depths of the Surrey countryside in a village called Shalford is River House. It was 10 years ago that I joined the small team who were to produce the world's first carbon fibre car. We produced the so-called body in white or more correctly body in black which included the structure and all the body panels. The boss, Gordon Murray, introduces the project. When we set out to do the uh, McLaren F1, we wanted to do the absolute ultimate sports car, the best driver's car, and quite, quite simply um, try and build the best sports car in the world. The McLaren road car's direct ancestor is the McLaren Formula One racing car. The F1 is made entirely from carbon fibre. In fact, it's the world's first all-carbon road car. What we have here represents the, uh, the entire primary structure of the car, that is the whole chassis and some of the body panels. And yet this, this whole structure, although it's incredibly stiff in torsion and bending, weighs just over 100 kilograms. So it's pretty easy to, uh, to move around. It's um, just a fraction of the weight of, of, a, of a metal car. On the BBC's Top Gear, journalist Tiff Nidell described for the first time, the technology of the monocoque. Actually, a Formula One style construction that starts with this. It was only just over 10 years ago that McLaren built the first ever Grand Prix car with a carbon fibre monocoque. Lightweight and very strong, yet it starts live as no more than an expensive roll of cloth. The cloth prepreg is cut in the same way that a dressmaker cuts cloth into 5,000 precisely matched pieces. These templates are packed and passed to the clean room where the laminators lay the material into the mould. The layup follows the layup manual and checklist. Complex parts such as the monocoque may have up to 17 layers. Most of the components include honeycomb core and heavy inserts to form edges and to mount fittings. On completion of laminating, the job is placed in a bag. The team soon discovered that bagging up on a gym mat reduced the number of bag bursts during curing. Bagging large parts such as the spider outer is a very skilled task indeed and requires a lot of teamwork. It's essential that the bagging material is pushed into every nook and cranny to prevent bridging in the final part, or worse still, the dreaded bag burst which could scrap it. The bagged component is held under vacuum and placed in the huge 3 metre diameter autoclave where it's cured under 90 pounds per square inch pressure at 125 degrees C for 3 hours. On completion of the cure, the bagging materials are stripped off and thrown away. The completed parts are trimmed, inspected and then passed to subassembly. The mono centre section is joined to the floor. The joint to the metal bulkhead is masked and the mounting holes drilled using a jig. All the joints are abraded by hand since only abrasion of the surfaces will form a good enough foundation for the bond. Adhesive is applied generously to the bond areas. Even the adhesive patterns have been worked out in advance to give the very best joint performance. Closures such as doors and engine covers are assembled in precise jigs which ensure a perfect panel seal and consistent panel gap. The most critical sub-assembly on the car is the crash structure. This is a complex layup of carbon fibre and high-tech Dyneema 
It's the performance of this structure which enables the McLaren to withstand a 30 mile an hour impact without even suffering a cracked windscreen. Finally, it's time to assemble the monocoque and spider. This is done in a high precision assembly jig. The assembly is done upside down so that the weight of the monocoque helps to clamp the parts together. Surplus adhesive squeezes out between the joint as it's made. This is a sign of good quality. After an overnight cure, the finished mono spider is gingerly lifted from the jig and passed to body fit for final assembly of the loose panels. Just 100 of these extraordinary carbon fibre bodies were produced in this even more extraordinary factory which no longer exists. This is probably the only record of what was achieved. Was it all worth it? I'll leave it to Tiff Nadell to conclude. So let's not beat about the bush. The absolute greatest car in the world is... the McLaren F1. The fastest production car ever. A top speed of 240.3 miles an hour means it covers a mile in 15 seconds. It holds records for acceleration and the highest speed round a circuit, which was set by me at 195. I tested it on TV way back in 1992, and it's still the drive I get asked about most. It's been a long time. Live the dream.